Um, when you're learning how to check an anesthetic machine, the, the first thing to remember is that every machine is different and you need to have a systematic approach to checking any machine. Some of the machines have got checklists that come up on them. Some of those checklists are, uh, you just read and you do it on your own. Some of them actually require actions and then saying that you've completed the action. So every machine is different and um, it's important to be able to uh, test the most basic machine all the way through to the most complicated machine. Today we are going to run through the machine check of the Drago Thalus. The aim of this video is to demonstrate the fundamental principles of checking any anaesthetic machine. To start with, you need to check the service history of your machine. This tag indicates that the machine is next due for service in 2013 in June. The anaesthetic machine must have its own designated emergency power source. Next, one needs to turn on the machine. Some anaesthetic machines have a main switch at the back of the machine. This switch on the front of the machine is to put the machine into a standby mode. The machine is indicating that it is powered by the main supply. It is also important to check that the machine's battery is fully charged and functional. This can be done by turning off the main power source to the machine. The machine is indicating that it is now battery powered. Having turned the machine on and checked the power supply, we now move on to checking the gas supply. Each gas has a color coded system and a shape coded system. Oxygen is coded white. Nitrous oxide is coded blue and medical air is coded black. The color coding at the wall corresponds with the color coding of the pipeline to the machine. At the back of the anesthetic machine, where the gases enter the machine, there is a diameter coded system so that only a specific gas can be connected to each port. One then checks the pipeline pressures of each gas on the front of the anaesthetic machine and each one should be around 4 times 100 kPa. These gauges are for each gas. As we can see, they correspond to nitrous oxide, air and oxygen. One then checks the flow of each gas through the variable orifice rotameter. So we check the flow of oxygen and we can check the flow of medical air and also the flow of nitrous oxide. The bobbins rotate so that one can see that gas is flowing and that the bobbins aren't just stuck. In the event of a failure of oxygen supply to your machine, it is essential that the nitrous oxide supply is also stopped. This can be tested by disconnecting the oxygen supply from the wall. At this point, one can speed up the process by pressing the oxygen flush button. This empties the machine of oxygen. And now one can see the machine is alarming because the oxygen supply has been terminated and the machine has dumped the nitrous oxide that was flowing. Depending on the anesthetic machine, if there is a loss of oxygen supply, one will either hear a Ritchie whistle or the machine will alarm. At this stage, you check the emergency oxygen cylinder that must be located on the back of every anaesthetic machine. This too has an index system called the pin index system. Each type of gas has a different configuration of pins for the cylinder. When opening the emergency oxygen cylinder, one wants to ensure that it is seated correctly and that there are no leaks. You must open the valve fully. Having opened the emergency oxygen cylinder, the oxygen failure alarm should disappear. It is essential to check the emergency oxygen cylinder pressure. A full cylinder has a pressure of 157 times 100 kPa. The cylinder must have at least 50 times 100 kPa of pressure in it otherwise it must be replaced. Having tested the oxygen failure alarm, one now needs to reconnect the oxygen hosing to the wall and perform the tug test. 
A tug test is performed for each of the medical gases. Part of the gas check is to calibrate your oxygen sensor. The oxygen sensor can be calibrated to room air, which is 21%, or to 100% oxygen. To calibrate to room air, one selects the O2 sensor 21% and turns on the medical air. The oxygen sensor is located at the inspiratory portion of the breathing circuit. The tick now indicates that the oxygen sensor is calibrated to 21%. The last part of checking the gas supply to the anaesthetic machine is to check that it is actually oxygen that is being delivered to the machine through the oxygen piping. This is done by dialing in a set concentration of oxygen and seeing if the oxygen sensor can read this concentration. Now that we have checked that we have supply of gas to the machine, we need to check for leaks within the machine. On the Fabius machine, this is done by disconnecting the common gas outlet. One can then occlude the common gas outlet, and while doing this, one looks at the bobbins on the rotameters to ensure that they are bouncing up and down. This indicates that there is no leak. Also, while including the common gas outlet, one needs to repeat the test with the vaporizers open. Here we can see the bobbins still bounce, and if we listen closely, we can't hear any leaks from around the vaporizer. This is repeated with each vaporizer. Don't forget to reconnect your breathing circuit to the common gas outlet. Most anesthetic machines will have space for two vaporizers. The vaporizers are situated on a back bar and it is important to check the O-rings. When attaching the vaporizers to the anesthetic machine, it is important to check that, the, that they are sitting flush on the back bar. These vaporizers have a transfer mode indicated by the T. When in this position, one can move a vaporizer onto or off a machine. When the vaporizer is now in place, you can put it into the neutral position. The vaporizers have a built-in safety mechanism that ensures that only one vaporizer can be open at a time. When one opens one vaporizer, a pin system moves that prevents the opening of the second vaporizer. One needs to check the level of vaporizer fluid within each vaporizer. Having checked the function of the anaesthetic machine, one now needs to check the integrity of the breathing system. In this particular machine, we have a circle system with a CO2 absorber. One needs to check that the soda line within the CO2 absorber hasn't changed colour, that there isn't too much moisture within the CO2 absorber, and that it is seated correctly on the machine without any leak. Other components of this breathing apparatus include a pressure sensor and a flow sensor. One needs to check that these are connected appropriately to the breathing circuit and to the back of the machine. There are two limbs to a breathing circuit, an inspiratory limb and an expiratory limb. Each limb has its own valve. One needs to check the function of those valves. This is done by squeezing the bag and watching for movement. It is also important to check the piping of the breathing circuit to ensure that it is clean, that it has no leaks and that there is no water within it. One now also needs to test for leaks within the breathing circuit. This is done by closing the APL valve, by building up pressure within the breathing circuit, by turning off all fresh gas flow and by squeezing the bag to make sure that there are no leaks. The final test of the anaesthetic machine is to check that you can actually ventilate. This is done by selecting the positive pressure ventilation mode, by ensuring that your APL valve is in the correct position, by dialing in a fresh gas flow rate, and by connecting a test lung, which is just another bag, to the patient's end of the breathing circuit. Then adjust the fresh gas flow rate 
to very low levels and if the ventilator continues to work and the bag continues to inflate and deflate this means that there are no leaks and that the system is working. One needs to watch and assess the movement of the bellows to ensure that the bag is seated correctly and also to ensure that there are no leaks. If there is a leak, the bellows will empty and won't refill. Another safety feature of the machine is the apnea pressure alarm, which usually indicates that there is a leak within the system. The final part of the machine check is to check that the monitors are working. For most anesthetics, this will include your SATS monitor, your non-invasive blood pressure monitor, your ECG monitor, and your capnography. The capnograph has a water trap. One needs to check that the trap is empty of water. One can check the functioning of the capnograph by blowing into the sample line. Now we can see the capnograph is working. Next, we need to test our suction apparatus. You want to first make sure that your suction will reach the patient. You can turn it on and occlude it. And you want to generate um, negative 30 to 40 millimeters of mercury. Anesthetic machines don't keep people alive. Anesthetic machines ventilate people and keep them asleep. What you need to keep someone alive is an airway and some oxygen. And so an ambu bag would be the most basic piece of equipment that you need. When you Part of the anesthetic machine check is checking the airway trolley. This has been covered in another video.